watch on mobile devices or the big screen, all for free. No subscription required. Download Beely now. I can't remember the last time that I went to the toilet and had a, just a normal poo. <laughs> so I want to be the Melissa I used to be. I really do not think there's any cure with at all. <laughs> Gentlemen, shall we raise our glasses to the cleanest colons <laughs> in all of Spain? <laughs> These eight Brits are stepping beyond their comfort zone, leaving behind conventional medicine for two weeks of intensive, gruelling, no holds barred, and no access denied radical alternative therapy. It's a last chance to combat their embarrassing illnesses and put an end to suffering in silence. This is where they hope miracles will happen, where global experts in holistic health are on a simple mission to cure. There's mud, sweat, tears, and twice daily colonic irrigation. I've been through childbirth, so I can do this. The process is extreme. Will the results be miraculous? At the spa of embarrassing illnesses. At this exclusive spa high in the Spanish mountains of Andalusia, eight people with some of Britain's most embarrassing and distressing ailments are about to arrive for two weeks of intensive alternative therapy and a complete system detoxification, which will mean seven days without solid food. The roller coaster ride is about to begin. Lovely to meet you. Hello. The therapists know all too well the extent of the challenges their new clients face in the days ahead. And Melissa. Yes. But today is all about making them feel welcome. <laughs> Come on, go inside. <laughs> what we're trying to do is create the environment for transformation. We call it the art of rejuvenation because it's not necessarily fully medical, it's not emotional, it's not physical, it's, it's everything all together. They go home a different person. Oh my God! at the pool and you can call it a transformation of the mind of the body there's lots of things that you can see when they leave that has changed but they've also changed inside and that's really what we're aiming for here is a complete transformation you know life-changing experience and these are definitely lives that are crying out for change <laughs> we've already said welcome to each of you individually but just group welcome officially delighted you're all here and even more than that, delighted you're here for two weeks because that is fantastic for us as your nutritionists and teachers and therapists to have somebody here for a full two weeks. It means we get the pre cleanse stuff, we get the whole detox and we're here to support you at the end too. So it's a real nice... Amanda's welcome spiel around. is a good chance to size each other up. I think it is one of those, one of those times when, when everybody's just a little bit awkward because we've all been thrown together. No one yeah. wants to really ask, so what's wrong with you? It's fantastic for us. I'm dying for a cigarette. I really am. Because it is one of those things that people can't see, it's like... What are you moaning about? Like, what's your problem? It means we get the pre. I can feel the sweat actually dripping down my legs at the minute as well, and down my front. Real nice. It's just such a change. It's just something I've never done before. It's just a completely different way of life. And what we're also going to do is introduce the yoga right from the beginning, which is Yayu's side of things. Um, so yeah. I think it's. Uh, I think all, it's all spiritual mumbo jumbo or something. Up ways. Usually in the beginning it's easy and then through the detox a little bit more difficult. Yes, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a it's beautiful spot, very magical. And each individual is hoping two weeks in this beautiful spot will help them unlock the door to good health. But for now, they're just keen to see their new digs. Okay, let me just give you your room keys. Okay. Now, who have we got? Matt one, in here? You're Matt. Here. Matt. You're in here? I'm in there. Matt two. In here, oh, and Matt three, in there. Okay, 
Okay, Amy, so this is your room. Here's your oh, key. Thank you. Okay, you've got a balcony at that side. Oh, wow. All right. I can't believe it. So I'll leave oh. you to settle in. Okay. And I'll see you in a little while. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. We all like to check the view and the ablutions area in a new environment. But for Amy, loo location is key. I can't remember the last time that I went to the toilet and had a, just a normal poo. <laughs> At first glance, who would suspect that Amy has an embarrassing illness? She's young, gorgeous and gregarious, but she suffers from irritable bowel syndrome. It means constant seesawing between constipation and diarrhea, bloating, flatulence and agonising pain. And it's a condition that's ruining her life. It's been more embarrassing when you get really trapped air and gas and things like that and you have to fart basically. I'm sorry, I've been prescribed laxatives from the doctor. Um, that's when I couldn't go to the toilet for two weeks and when it suddenly does work it's like you've got to run to the toilet wherever you are and you've got, you know, and you could be in someone else's house. I mean how embarrassing is that? Okay, this is your room Tracy. Oh wow. Oh that's nice. This is gorgeous. <gasps> Oh, Look at the view! Geez, imagine waking up to that. Oh my god! Look at the pool! Oh my god! That is fantastic. This is amazing. It's a group experience, but everyone needs their own space, so separate accommodation is called for, even for married couples. This is an individual journey that you're going to go through. Okay? Right. So you do need your own space. Right. So what we've got is got one double room and one single room. Yep. You're in the single, you're in the double, you have plenty of time together because there's space for you both there. Okay. Right? You have your separate space, which All is right, actually okay. really important when you detox. Okay. So we're not separating you and dividing you, but there is that need as you go through your week, you'll right. appreciate it. Yes, even the closest of couples will find there'll be too much information. Oh God, it stinks awful. And it's kind of got... Hey, At this. some moments. Wait, well, that's come out of my ass. Maybe this is your new question. Or is that movements? Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> oh, dear. It really is foul. Detox is clearly no picnic, and the therapist's eventual confiscation of body products that do smell nice could have a big impact on one of our group. <laughs> Oh, herbal tonic, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> shall I? Shall I go? Oh, look oh. at the chair. Look at the state of that. That's why I only wear black. <laughs> do you feel? Do you feel really hot? I'm soaking. Feel my back. God, yeah. <gasps> that's like you've absolutely. Someone's like thrown in you in a pool. pool. God, is that what it's always like then? The majority. Of the, yeah. Look. Yeah. Look. I look like I've wet myself. Now. There's a saying that horses sweat, gentlemen perspire, and women simply glow. Jodine wishes with all her heart that were true. Really dignifying. <laughs> but it's really no laughing matter. Jodine suffers from hyperhidrosis. It started with excessively sweaty hands at the age of five, and she tried everything to stop it. As a last resort, at the age of 15, she had two operations that involved collapsing her lungs and severing some nerves in her hands. But that backfired tragically, and now any anxiety, any nervousness, She's completely drenched. So I really have I've tried everything. I've, I went back to the doctors because I got really low about five weeks ago and just said I can't continue to go on like this. I just cannot live the rest of my life how I am at the moment. Um, and he said, medically, really, there's nothing more that they can do with anything for me because they've tried everything. And as a last resort, she's here in the desperate hope that her excruciatingly embarrassing condition can be cured. Will the radical alternative approach be the answer? There's so much I want to do with my life and because of my sweating, I won't do it. I'm 25 year old. I've never hurt anybody. I'm a really nice, friendly person and it's just destroying my life. <laughs> this group of ordinary Brits with extraordinary health problems have committed to spending two weeks at an alternative health spa to undergo a treatment regime which will take them deep within themselves in an effort to get to the root of their embarrassing illnesses. Some conditions are obvious to the eye, but looking at these two young women, 
no one would necessarily know that Jodine's back might be soaked in sweat and Amy's IBS might be making her feel bloated and flatulent. An integral part of the spa regime will be regular practice of yoga. The word yoga means union in Sanskrit and that's, that's pretty much what it feels like to me is an integration of the body with also the mind and the emotions because it's the only form of exercise that you feel more calm afterwards, you feel more relaxed afterwards and the great thing about it is it actually gives you more energy. I find if you do a really hard yoga session you expect to be tired but in actual fact it gives you a bit of an energy boost. That's all very well and Amanda's been doing yoga for years so what's it going to do for this lot in two weeks? Plus they have to do it at dawn and halfway up a mountain. So already it's an uphill struggle for the first session. Even at the bottom of the slope, cracks are beginning to show. Okay, I can do this. God. While he waits for his new charges to conquer the climb, Israeli yoga instructor Yair limbers up. We would like them to practice the yoga to help them unify or understand the connection between the physical condition, emotional, mental and spiritual. Right now, someone looks like she has a long way to go to reach that understanding. Yair has a complete bunch of novices on his hands and although they are very capable hands, it looks like he's going to have his work cut out for him. Breathe deep into the stretch. Always try to recognize which muscle are working the hardest and try to relax them. <laughs> I'll try that. Eh? And it's not long before the physicality of the moves takes its toll on one of our first timers. Now, do you have uh, right pain all over or only on the lower all part? Here, the lower part. And the are there any posture that you feel worse? No, it's just the back, the lower All the time? Back. All the time. <laughs> Melissa is a compulsive overeater, and years of late night binging has made her balloon from 8 to 16 stone. Embarrassed and ashamed, Melissa is now ready to face up to her food demons. I need to do something about my lifestyle because food will kill me. And if the food doesn't, the yoga just might. I've, got, I've just got to deal with it. Pay attention when you go down because it's a bit slippery, okay? Pre-spa, Melissa would turn to junk food for comfort at times of stress. Today's breakfast menu is a far cry from junk. I don't think it's milk, I reckon it's just oats and water. The group's not impressed now. You can't wait. Oh, I tell you, Frosties, got nothing on them. <laughs> But in just a few days' time, this will seem like a banquet compared to their daily liquid-only diet of broth and juice with just a spoonful of clay. Not so much to help the medicine go down, but to get their bowels moving. Oh, I just, my back's hurting me. Yeah, my back's hurting me. I mean, it's just taken quite a while just to get used to the movements and everything. I've not stretched like that for years. <laughs> And breakfast may not be what she's used to, but it is food, and that cheers Melissa up. So you, um, you get smooth on what you used to? Hey, the guys, oh, oh, cook. The, the, no, this is going to be nice, you know. Oh, I've put everything on mine. I think it's got... Do <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I can't explain it. <laughs> it's got... Oh, good, Jason. <laughs> 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 it's like it's, it's nice. You know, when you mix Amy it, might not know exactly what it is, but she knows it will be good for her constipated system. Well, I like the juice, that's all that's good anyway. I'm kind of looking forward to the fasting now. <laughs> <laughs> the new menu's clearly not to everyone's taste, but Melissa's actually going back for seconds. Figs. Del Monte. But post breakfast, Melissa's still not feeling right in herself and continues to agonise about being fat, not fit. I used to be so fit and I've just done a yoga session and I'm so, I 
are stiff and my back really hurts me. <laughs> I just so want to be healthy and, and well, I just can't seem to see. I need to sort of relax. It's just the teacher is so um, flexible. Anyway, I just, you know, take it a minute, minute at a time. And I'll be all right, you know, I'm strong, I'll be okay. Come in. It's only me. Just making sure you're okay. I'm all right. Oh, come on. Are you okay? Fellow patient Tracy instinctively moves in to console Melissa. As a mother of two young boys, Tracy's hardwired to comfort and reassure. <laughs> and at the spa, she will seize any moment to call home. Okay. Bye. The fact is, Tracy probably relies on her family too much. She limits her life because of her embarrassing condition. She suffers from psoriasis where the skin breaks out in red scaly patches and it covers nearly 80% of her body. It's not contagious, but for Tracy, it's nothing short of hideous. I always wear long jeans. I never wear shorts, I never wear skirts. I haven't done for the past, I'd say five or six years, because I'm just too embarrassed to wear clothes that I'd like to wear because I'm embarrassed of what my skin looks like. And if she doesn't deal with her condition, one day it may well impact on her marriage. I, but I'm not very confident mm. with things like that. I'm very, like, I won't even get undressed in front of him. He just knows he has to turn away. He, he just knows. He does. He just, oh, just even if he just him. looks at me, he just, oh, I'm sorry, oh, you know, when he'll turn away. He just, he knows that I'm not confident enough. For... Be... So Tracy has forced herself to leave her family and undertake her own personal journey. A journey, in fact, that couldn't get any more personal. I've been through childbirth, so I can do this. Oh, he's switching without feeling. What the hell is that? Really minging, to be fair. Oh, thank you. Just very strange talking about shit like this. <laughs> it wasn't cool. <sighs> Two of the patients are here on the journey together because their problem is a joint one. People don't know how to handle the fact that you don't look poorly. You know, Charlotte looks perfectly fine. Um, you know, and it doesn't affect you in an outward, in an outwardly obvious way. No. Um, but the effects, uh, uh, you know, certainly psychologically are quite pronounced. Charlotte and Damien are desperate to have children. But Charlotte has severely polycystic ovaries, which means her eggs are rarely released. And in fact, she has not had a period in over five years. On top of that, Damien's lifestyle choices could be giving him slow swimmers making it virtually impossible for them to conceive naturally. That's after that. And he stopped crying then? I stopped crying then. We married Ask there. Her. Husband and wife. Yeah. While in the 21st century, lots of couples choose not to have children, in Damien and Charlotte's world, when you've been married for eight years and there's no sign, the questions start to get awkward. When are we going to hear the patter of little tiny feet then, you know? When are we going to see another little Damien or another little Charlotte? Yeah. You just you make know. up an excuse like, oh, well, the time's not right, Damien's very busy at work, so we're just not going to bother just yet. And you, you just put it off and... Well, you just lie. You do, you just, yeah, you just lie. And although they feel bad about their biological problems, <laughs> Charlotte and Damien are also sensitive to the fact that others feel embarrassed for them. Yeah. You know, what you really can't say is, well, actually, Charlotte's got polycystic ovaries and a bit of endometriosis and she's got an underactive thyroid, so, listen, I'd really appreciate it if you didn't ask that question because that just makes that yeah. person feel absolutely horrible. It does. You just you make know. up an excuse. And if, statistically, one of the reasons couples have trouble conceiving is that they don't have enough sex, then surely splitting Charlotte and Damien up is hardly the way forward. They're clearly a very sort of intertwined couple. Um, they reflect things off one another. So I very much expect them to go through the initial stages doing that, talking about it within themselves as a unit, what our job will be to try and integrate them into the rest of the group a little bit. 
so that they manage to do things on their own. You know, it will happen as part of the detox where they'll have maybe personal stuff and rather than load that on to their partner, to load that onto their therapist because so sometimes that separation, that little bit of space and time on your own is extremely healing. It's all very well for Amanda to know the reasons for the separate rooms, but Charlotte and Damien are not clear on it and it's starting to rankle. When Amanda said that um, we were going to be in separate rooms, she did say that she wasn't trying to split us up, but that's what I feel is, is happening, and I feel... I feel a bit isolated, that's what you said to yeah. me. Yeah. It's, it's almost kind of forcing us apart when actually as a couple we can tell perfectly well when we need to be apart yeah. and when we need to be together. And we were hoping this would have also strengthened even more what we've got really, weren't we? And, and well, I certainly shouldn't push it apart. And I, I think shouldn't attempt to do. There is a possibility that it could be in, in separate rooms. Yeah. And because there's two of them, and that's two plain-speaking Yorkshire folk who are not backward about coming forward, they decide to confront Amanda. Can you go first? OK, I just wanted to kind of clarify the situation about the rooms, obviously. You said that you're taking an executive decision. Yes. Um, you know, to, to, to kind of split us up, mm. um, technically. So, um, just wondered what the reasoning behind that was. OK, there's two reasons. First one is we physically cannot provide those four hours of colon cleansing time, as in two hours each, in one room a day. Because yeah. it would mean that you'd miss out on other things that need to happen during the schedule. Yeah. The other thing is that as you go through detox, there is often a need to take a little bit of time to yourself. So it's not like to be in the evening, you can still kind of go and share a room as if you're, you know, dating again, that yeah. sort of thing, yeah. creep into one another room at night. <laughs> but the idea is you have space, you have personal space. So there is no way we're trying to split you up because you're obviously an extremely happy couple. And there's no, you know, we're not trying to change that. It's just that we're going to allow for that as it might happen naturally. No, that's fine. We just wanted to kind of get the expectations clear. Yeah. Uh, just throughout that, so that's absolutely fine. Are you sure? That's fine. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> yeah, happy night. Charlotte's happy yeah. smiley. <laughs> happy I'm happy night. smiley. <laughs> it's, it Everybody's happy if, smiley. If Charlotte's happy smiley, that means you're happy smiley. Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, because the opposite is just a horrible thing to think about. <laughs> <laughs> high in the Spanish mountains of Andalusia, there are high hopes that two weeks at an alternative therapy spa will turn around eight lives that have been plagued with suffering and shame. Right now, they're all off for a slap-up meal at the local taverna. Everyone always changes because it's part of the process. It's almost like when you start to detox, it happens whether you want it to or not. Sometimes there are people that are more reticent. They're a bit more scared or they're a bit more worried. Um, sometimes it happens more with the men, actually. They're a little bit more worried about the process of giving up, of uh, letting go, of being really, fully really open about their bodies. But as soon as that barrier is broken down, as soon as people relax and go with it, that's when you really see big change. <laughs> go on, help yourselves, be brave. It's going to bite you. <laughs> Slap up detox style looks great. Grated carrot, grated beetroot, and great lashings of water. Don't you worry. <laughs> okay. And it's crunch time in more ways than one as the group begins to get the measure of one another. I imagine it's brown and fizzy. <laughs> Sometimes it seems that, that, that our kind of situation is in some ways worse than other people's, but in other ways it's, it's actually a damn sight better. You know, you see people like, like Tracy who's got um, a, a really obvious skin condition yeah. which makes her, her life such a misery in some respects, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. certainly makes going out and the, the self-image thing and, and all that thing just so difficult. Yeah. Actually, ours is invisible. We can go out and walk about and, and yeah. Nobody I'm, knows. You know, I'm big, but hey, you know, I can handle that. That's yeah. fine. But then, you know, if you look at someone like Amy, for instance, you know, yeah. good-looking girl, young, uh, you know, blonde and all that kind of stuff, you would never know to look at her that when she, she went out and she her. got IBS and, and, yeah. and all that kind of really, really difficult things to deal with. For me, everybody's got Everybody's condition is, is of, of the same seriousness to them because yeah. it, it affects people's lives in, in a very, very individual way. So, oh. here's the next two weeks. Cheers. 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 There are many unusual and extreme treatments to come over the next few weeks. One of the first is, of all things, a breathing workshop. 
it's really important for these two weeks that you have or you're more aware of what breathing is all about and why it's important. So I decided to do just a little session on the breath. Instinctive as breathing may seem, after answering a questionnaire about shortness of breath, it seems some of the group are breathing too shallowly on a regular basis. What this means physiologically, in other words, what it does to your body over time is that you will lose electrolytes. What that means in effect is that you'll feel fatigued and tired, a bit listless. It can upset your sleep patterns. It can make you feel like you can't sort of sit still, you can't relax. So obviously relaxation and being able to sit still and being able to breathe deeply and have the oxygenation, like we'd call it, of the tissues during a detox is really important. So it's nice this, at this early stage to try and teach you all how to do that. Okay, so we're starting just by observing our breath. Does it come to the chest, to the middle or the lower abdomen? Just pay attention. Is it relaxed? And as simple as the exercises are, they soon evoke some strong responses from some individuals. <laughs> Just a few moments of deep breathing are enough to trigger the emotional agony Amy suffers with her irritable bowel. When you start bloated and swelling, you don't feel attractive at all. You don't feel you know, sexy or, you know, nice and happy. You just feel sluggish and swollen and uncomfortable. It's affected my whole life and it's, it, it's really, really starting to get me down. This is subtle yet intense therapy. It's bringing up buried issues and the therapist's radical approach is actually to let each individual go with the experience. Melissa can't help but comfort Amy though. <laughs> Sometimes just the atmosphere and being around so many people who are essentially healers, because that's what we do here, we, we help people to heal, heal themselves. And often people, they just arrive here and they burst into tears because it's a big build up and they have expectations that they're going to feel a lot better here. And they, they come and they think, now it's going to happen. And um, so yes, people can cry in the first day or take seven days. Emotions are certainly welling up in the female camp. What's the experience doing for the blokes? They're all electricity things. Yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. It's the first time you felt it, huh? Yeah. Is it, is it, that's not right. That's yeah. just, that's absolutely fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's energy. Yeah. <laughs> energy flows in the body. We are yeah. electricity, you know, we are electric body. Absolutely. <laughs> Astounding. Yeah. That you, you, no one will believe you. Uh -huh. But you felt that kind of push, that kind of magnetism, negative magnetism almost. You know, yeah. you have a lot of power between your hands, is it? Yes, it's absolutely fascinating. You actually felt something, didn't you, love? I did, I felt the earth move. Yeah, you felt the force. Being this, this, this cynical, sceptical Yorkshireman that I am, I thought I'd nothing, but, but, but frankly, bugger me. <laughs> and that was kind of really weird because I don't believe in all that kind of aura. Because he always started to talk about auras and, and halos and stuff, and I started to just, whoa. Um, but, you know, but, but the fact of the matter is that, that cynical old me did feel the force, whatever, you know. Um, and that, 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 was, that, was quite, that was quite amazing for me. And of course it's not the case that all they need is the air that they breathe and to feel the force. There's more than that to holistic theory. The belief behind natural medicine is that the body has the ability to heal itself, which of course it does, because when you get a cold, you get over it. When you get a cut, your body heals itself. That's the fundamental principle, is that your body can heal itself given the right conditions. But what most people have is a situation where the conditions have gone too far or it's too chronic. And to break out of that, you have to create a special environment, an internal environment for that to happen. So here at the detox, we've got the internal environment controlled by the actual detox process and the external environment, this place, which supports it. The external environment speaks for itself. But for our eight patients, soon their internal environment will be about a minimum input and maximum output, as they start a seven-day fast with regular colonic irrigations. But the body has to be prepared for this, so a course of natural supplements is prescribed. 
Jodine's first. Hello, how are you? Fine, thank you. Uh, come and have a seat. The capsules are not going to directly affect her excessive sweating, but they're part of the process that hopefully will. I'm going to ask them to take some supplements in the next few days, uh, just to start with the bowel cleanse very, very gently and with the detox very, very gently. So it's not going to have a dramatic effect on them, but it's going to start preparing their body. <laughs> right, OK. The other thing is start giving them a herbal detox formula to, again, support the liver, which in most people is pretty congested and pretty exhausted. So we're going to start to, to help that. So that. Four, four of these. And, and then yeah. another half one of them, just yeah. to make sure you're hydrated. All right, yeah. And then I'm going to take their body fat which is a nice measure. First of all, their weight. A lot of people are concerned about their weight when they come here. Is that 8.1 8. stones? Yeah. Oh, that's a bit low. Yeah. While it's true that Dan's slight of stature, that's actually the least of his embarrassment. He suffers from chronic eczema, a condition where the skin fails to contain moisture and becomes hot, itchy, dry, red and inflamed to the point of blistering and bleeding. Say we were to go out and get lucky and, uh, you know, you wake up in the morning and, you know, there's blood on the sheets from your cracked skin <laughs> and you on, on somebody else's bed, you know. I mean, it's just... It's not nice for them, is it? And it's not nice for you. OK, so if you step on it now, just keep your... And last, but by no means least in the detox lineup is Daniel. Just stay there until it stops. It's going to come run through a number of... So you're 20 stone 9, and your body fat is 42.2% which does actually mean you're clinically obese, but we knew that anyway. Yeah. Um, and all we've got to do now from this point onwards is work towards making that better. Clinically obese, Daniel's inherent shyness has led him to hide behind his size and his beard. And his love of reenacting battles allows him to add another layer to his armour. But now he wants to wage a war on his personal demons. I do want to lose weight. I do want to be a different person to where the way I am now. Um, I just, I just need that push. I need, I need someone, to, I need someone to start me up in the right direction. You know, I, it feels like there's almost like an off switch that needs to be turned on and start me up on the way. And then after that, I think I can hopefully, you know, you know, go out there and find myself a, a you know, a good, good woman and stuff. Oh, everyone relaxing at the pool. <laughs> While Amanda's been sizing up the group's physical state. Midi has been keeping a close watch on their emotions. Right now I'm going to go and talk to Melissa and just check she's OK because it's so much part of the process here in, in detox that we look after people and we observe them all the time and just to help them through anything that emotionally is coming up for them because that is another big part of detox, not just physically but emotionally too. It's like I don't know who I am. At the moment. Mm. To be fair, anyone would have a hard time recognising the Melissa of today when you see what she used to be. I must have been one of the first girl DJs that actually started coming out on the scene. Now it's like unbelievable, you know. So um, I was really privileged and I used to mix in with the boys. Um, but I became a star in my own right, you know. And I've done a few radio shows in Italy. Um, I was, I also done um, some glam modelling. I was very proud of that too. Now our ex-model and hip DJ is a full-time carer to her 14-year-old son, Angelo. Look, eight, nine, ten, eleven. When I found out that my son was disabled, I, that really did... Um, it killed something inside me. Um... Can you go up? And up, pressing. And uh, so I, I um, instead of punishing him, I've punished myself. <laughs> Melissa's punishment has been to gorge herself with sweets and all things bad, but now she knows she has to change. For 14 and a half years, I've been like mum or Miss Stewart or, or mother or whatever, carer. Um, 
and it's a break and it's a time for me to find out about me. Um, I'm so sensitive. I really am. Mm. But if you can't cry here, where can you cry? This is what we're here for. It is, I'm mm. The workshops are over for the day and everyone takes the chance to forget their embarrassing illnesses and make the most of their idyllic environment. Ah, oh. oh, that's lovely. Ah, oh, bliss. But for Amy, Although Yair let her be during her breathing workshop breakdown, he'd like to do a follow-up treatment that he thinks could benefit her. I've probably had IBS for about two and a half years. Um, do you have any idea why it started two, year, two and a half years ago? Do, did you have any incident, like, yeah, um, powerful? Well, probably it was about five years ago. I was in a relationship mm -hmm. for a long time, mm -hmm. and um, we split up for mm -hmm. the first time then. And Five years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't feel ready to go too deep into that at the minute. Well, but to me, you. that's the main issue. Mm -hmm. To be honest. Yeah. If if you feel it's too early to to go yeah. into stuff, we don't do it. It does it doesn't matter. Whatever. Because for me, what matters uh, is the mind body connection. Okay. So. It looks like you you dealt with this stuff before, so you know what's going on. Um, but for me, what's important is that we can connect uh, your symptoms with your emotions. Okay. Okay. So uh, you can lie down. Okay. Outside, some of the group are finding it highly therapeutic just chatting with each other. So nice to talk to people with. I know that we've all got different Yeah, different, but we all feel the same, don't we? Because I've never, ever met or spoke to anybody with hydrosis, ever. So, no, do you know? In years, I've just... Nobody, because for so long, I've just felt like I've been so alone. The alienation and isolation Jodine has always felt over her excessive sweating has previously seen her seek professional counselling. I have received counselling in the past, which wasn't really helpful um, due to... It's my situation, I think it's quite hard for people to understand where I'm coming from when they haven't actually suffered with the condition themselves. And loads of people think I'm dead ignorant when they make me like, because I just don't <laughs> think, I just want to face in the background because I don't want them to look at me. Because when, when they start talking to me, they're going to be looking, then they're going right. to see me sweating, and then I'll sweat even more because I get anxious. It's just a vicious Can't cycle, me. really. That. Psoriasis sufferer Tracy is also feeling the relief of being in a non-judgmental environment. It must be awful for you, like you have to cover up all the time. Yeah, I never. I always wear jeans or a jacket. Never ever sat with somebody that I don't know with a vest up on and a pair of shorts. <laughs> it's really strange. Like a really big thing. It's a huge thing. Isn't yeah, it? it's a really big thing. It's like your first step mentally, isn't it, really? Yeah. So uh, I'll start by looking at your energy. Okay. okay. I can see the aura and the different chakras, okay. so I can get the idea of what's going on. Mm -hmm. Another of his healing skills is acupuncture, and in fact, Yair is seen by some as the holistic equivalent of an X-ray machine. Except he doesn't see bones. He believes he can see a person's energy and thus source potential problems. How do you feel emotionally right now? Emotional. I feel. If you said. I feel yeah. quite sad, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because the main thing that I sense from your energy is the congestion in the chest, which is uh, the sadness, yeah. and the energy that moves here. So I have to lower it down. Yaya uses acupuncture needles to redirect Amy's energy. So the first needle I'm going to put is going to open the energy of, of your heart. Okay. Okay? Yeah. And take out the sadness. Okay. It will help you release the sadness. It's okay? Yeah, do you feel? You feel comfortable? Yeah. Okay, great. I can 
can feel the sadness coming to me when really? I touch this point. It's very interesting. It's like... <laughs> definitely feel more... Movement. M down, mm -hmm. definitely. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you feel more relaxed in your... I feel more relaxed, yeah. The others, meanwhile, are feeling hungry and, for lack of anything more familiar, are keen to tuck into an appetizer of oat cakes and hummus. So, who are we waiting for then? Amy. We're waiting for Amy. She's had a treatment this afternoon, so she won't be joining us for a while. Oh, okay. It's not like I'm going to rush to eat it, is it? So <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, it's quite safe. So, 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 it's quite safe. I'll have a little bit. Give it a little bit. Well, in for a penny, in for a pound. I'll sort you real. <laughs> oh, now, to be fair, that's quite nice. <laughs> <laughs> I have, like, a nice nice lasagna and a bit of garlic bread on the side. Oh, mm. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? With chocolate fudge cake. Oh. Oh. Does somebody want to hold everybody down? We can punch it ever since. <laughs> <laughs> um. I feel a lot more relaxed. I don't feel as highly strung as I was. So I feel like that's moved my energy around, definitely. definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel hungry. <laughs> not a great sign. No, it's a wonderful sign because it means that you're, you know, you're not nauseated. Mm. It means that your stomach energy now is ready to receive mm. food. It's not tight. Not tight, yeah. It's perfect. Mm. It's wonderful. At the dining table, second course arrives. Well, that's mine. Oh, that's really <laughs> <laughs> but closer inspection reveals a raw deal. I forgot to turn the oven on. See, when you, when you stop... Now, yeah, that's the thing that I'm just looking at, actually. It's cold, isn't it? It's cold. I've never eaten it raw before, Fresh, raw and organic is all part of preparing the body for the upcoming fast. Although this almost could fit a pizza in it. Could make a nice pizza out there, couldn't we? <laughs> <laughs> a bowl of pizza. This self-torture is fantastic, isn't it? Can I have a shot? Yeah. Yeah. Um, how are you feeling? All right. A bit drained. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Just a bit tired. Absolutely love this tea. You are? Yeah. 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 I love that. <laughs> it's all laughs now, and Amy in particular is very relaxed. But remember, this is just the start of a very personal journey. Come nightfall, everyone retreats to their own rooms. Well, okay, not everyone. I have spoke with Amanda today and she said that we just need to spend time apart when needed. So this is not a moment that is needed. So I've got my stuff for tomorrow and I'm going to spend the night with Damien. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and behind closed doors, the patients have a chance to reflect on the experience so far. That one seems really cool. Um... Everyone seems like up for it, although a little bit of a, yeah, second thoughts on the uh, food. I'm very hungry. Very hungry indeed. But at least you've eaten something. That's true. You have not eaten anything, have you? No. It's all nasty, nasty, nasty. So there are gripes. But it's not all bad. I just feel so normal. It's amazing. I don't have to hide. I don't have to cover anything up or... I'm just totally being myself, but I'm loving every minute of it. Absolutely fantastic. But I mean, really, I think the main main stuff's to come.